You're not, you're not being warranted. All right, Adam, I got nothing to say. Uh, Adam, Adam, yeah. right? I'm yeah. Yeah. I don't. Do you remember me from the Elliott Hospital from a while back, man? Yeah, I got, I got nothing to say. Right. So, hey, man. The only thing we're trying to figure out yeah. is where harm is. Okay. okay. So, the concern is that you guys are sick, right? Okay. You're not in trouble. Nobody said you're losing your daughter. Okay. Okay. So I want to make that clear. Okay. So I'll, you know, have my body tomorrow too, yeah. just like everybody else is being on your video. So you just need to find out where she is. That's all I'm concerned about. I mean, you're not in any trouble right now that I know of. Okay. We have no warrants. Okay. So, where's your daughter so we can check on her and make sure that she's okay? Right. Right. right now, I have nothing to say to you guys. But that's not what I'm, I'm just asking okay. where she is. I, I have nothing to say. So you, you don't care how you, if your daughter's okay or not? I do. I, I listen, I have nothing to say. Is your daughter, if I'm under arrest, you guys can arrest me. Wow, what an attitude he's got, huh? Well, Adam Montgomery's attorneys also want to exclude some suspicious purchases that his wife, Kayla, claims that he made to tamper with Harmony's remains, including a metal cutting blade, a grinder, and lime. Now, Kayla Montgomery is expected to be a key witness at Adam's upcoming trial scheduled to begin on February the 6th. She already testified at his trial last June where he was convicted on weapons charges. Here to discuss with me, Court TV crime and justice correspondent Matt Johnson, Court TV legal correspondent Kelly Kraft, and we still have attorney Carl Steinbeck standing by remotely for us. What a panel I've got today on the couch, you guys. Ooh, I wish we had all day to talk about this case. There's so much. Uh, Matt, let me start with you because you were there. You saw Kayla testify in the gun trial. You covered it for us. How did she come off as a witness? Right, so I was there for the weapons trial there in New Hampshire, and she came off very credible, even though, you know, she's serving time, and yeah. she was there in her prison outfit as well. But, uh, you know, I'm also looking over at that defense table and how Adam was carrying himself, very confident walking in the courtroom each and every day. You know, now a convicted felon, dirtbag, but with a great attorney, Carolyn Smith, that's really pushing for these motions. Ah, right. You know, you're speaking of, and so we know that they want the items from Home Depot to not be in front of the jury. Uh, and Kelly, I want to bounce something off of you, please. Tap it into your experience as a former prosecutor. Um, taking a look at a piece of that affidavit of probable cause uh, that was for the, the murder charges, uh, Kayla offers some information about seeing Adam Montgomery pouring some lime on Little Harmony's body. So take a look. So we've, we've highlighted um, this and she says that harmony uh, wasn't bones uh, that she had skin and teeth and hair this is so sad and she could still tell that it was her um, and then Adam put about half of the bag of lime or a little more um, into that bag that he was carrying around uh, that duffel bag that's mentioned all throughout the affidavit Kelly knowing this motion that his defense team has filed trying to keep out the lime and the other things the grinder um, what do you think as a prosecutor how problematic would it be if that stuff is excluded well as a prosecutor you want to argue that this is really connected to the case here and that's how you can get this kind of evidence in of course defense counsel is saying that lime is kind of a common product that maybe a lot of people will buy it so they want this ex excluded and of course they've actually had some wins so far in this case because the judge has agreed to suppress some of the interactions that he has made with the police but of course defense counsel wants that entire video that interrogation video and a little bit if you want to call it interrogation video that they showed earlier they want all of that excluded defense counsel but the prosecution really has to stick to the argument that this his actions are all connected to the death of his daughter mm -hmm. and then the judge can maybe decide to get it in. Mm -hmm. Right, Kelly. I'm glad you brought up about the video because he's also trying to keep that out. Uh, let's play another clip uh, from when he is questioned by police. Uh, can you make me a promise? Like, man to man? Can you tell me that she's alive? <laughs> you can't play the same word games that you played with me the other no, day. No. It's not word games. I got nothing. That's what we care about. We want to know. This isn't gonna. This isn't gonna go anywhere. Like this isn't gonna stop. So no, no, it's not. So, no, so either right. get on the bus now or get run over. Well, I got nothing else to say. Why is it you have so much trouble talking about harmony? Because I just got. I got nothing else to say. I want a lawyer with me. Lawyers 
up there, Carl Steinbeck. Uh, tell me what you think about the likelihood that that video potentially being excluded. What do you think the judge will do, please? Yeah, I think the judge is probably going to exclude most all the evidence of what he says. And uh, what they're looking at as a prosecutor is if that happens, then what other evidence can we bring in to show his guilt? And a lot of that would be his body language, his demeanor. And so take out the words. What do you have about the way he's acting, just the way he's uh, uh, responding outside of his car and whatnot? And think about it. What, what kind of father wouldn't be concerned about his daughter who's missing for two years? And he's got nothing to say about it. So... He's obviously very uh, acting very guilty and suspicious, and that's what the fence is trying to do is keep everything they possibly can out. And even the stuff like the line purchase, that kind of stuff should come in, though, because that does show that it's directly tied to the crime. And so I expect all that kind of evidence of what he purchased at Home Depot will be admissible. Mm -hmm. All right, Carl, I I'm with you there. Uh, I know Kelly's nodding, too. I think we can all agree this really should. I'd be stunned if the judge excludes that. Maybe that bit of video there, maybe, you know, I, I don't know because it's, you know, I don't know what he's offering. He lawyers up, you know, immediately. And to your point, Carl, he just sits there and looks guilty. So it is prejudicial in a way. And if I'm a prosecutor, I probably wouldn't care so much if that's excluded. I don't think it really makes the case. Uh, I want to show you all something else from the affidavit. Let's take a look at some of what is noted by police in the way in which uh, they say this crime was covered up. Uh, in the affidavit, and we've highlighted the portion of it, if we could put it on the screen, it says that Adam had placed Harmony's body in a duffel bag and kept it in the trunk of the car. For months, they took Harmony's remains with them as they bounced around living in different places. While living at a shelter, Adam placed the bag with Harmony's remains in the ceiling vent in their bedroom. And when the duffel bag began leaking, Adam placed a trash bag around it, only removing the bag from the ceiling when a neighbor complained about the smell. And at one point, uh, he apparently moved her remains uh, to a smaller bag in order to fit her inside it. Yeah. He replaced the remains in, or he placed them rather inside a bathtub. And that's where we highlighted that portion a couple moments ago where Kayla says she saw the lime being poured. Uh, the story that is told here, Matt Johnson, I, like as I'm reading it, I mean, I'm cringing. I know you are too. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about the family and, and the fact that this girl wasn't even given a chance at life. Her body has never been found. And then also the cast of characters that we're going to see back on the stand making the case that this dirtbag is guilty of the murder because they have their own set of problems and troubles that prosecutors have to overcome with yeah. drug addiction. They definitely right. do. And of course, she's going to be, Kayla is going to be a key witness in the this wife. trial, yep. the wife, the estranged right. wife. Right. And of course, defense counsel wants to muddy the waters on her and talk about her prior convictions. And of course, their goal is to get the jury not to believe a word she says. Right, Kelly. They need Kayla. If Kayla goes south, uh, this is really going to be problematic because she saw everything and she's one of those people that as a prosecutor you know you just have to kind of bite your tongue and you know and and play the hand you're dealt so to speak look I, I mean she's she's a criminal look she engaged in this she pleaded she's cooperating I um, and so look it's like all right let's you know hold her accountable to a degree but realize you know she didn't do the the big crime the, this was dad according to police and prosecutors uh carl steinbeck uh tell me how strong do you think the case is for prosecutors against adam montgomery i think they're going to be able to prove that he's the one behind it and i think that uh the way he was moving the body around and whatnot that is just so absolutely gruesome and uh, so I, I think that's going to really bring in a lot of strong indicators right there just because of what he was doing with the body and how he's moving around. And the way people were complaining about the odors and whatnot, that didn't seem to affect him, that others had to bring up uh, the disgusting nastiness about things like that. So I, I do think that from what I've seen that uh, the evidence will be there to convict him. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it, it seems like the evidence is there. Oh, my gosh. Um, and with the, the gun case, uh, Matt, I remember him mm -hmm. standing up and saying, you know, I didn't kill my daughter and all that. Oh, what was yeah. that about? He was like, well, I accept the, the jury's decision. I'm not going to really talk about that. But I didn't do this. I didn't kill my daughter. And, and I'm innocent on all, all of those allegations. And everyone just kind of looked at each other when yeah. he said that. It was, it was kind of weird. Right. Kelly, do you think there's any way we're going to see him testify? 
I would say no, Julie. I just I hope so. Yeah, he, yeah right, of course yeah. we all right. <laughs> would love to see him to, him testify, but clearly drugs were involved, and he had some sort of issues that were going on to do something like this. Of course, he's presumed innocent until proven guilty, but just the craziness, the gruesomeness of this case is just is just terrible. I would say do not take the stand. Right. Hopefully, he listens to the good advice of his counsel and doesn't testify. Mm, but they're good. A guy like this, yeah, yeah. I remember you were very impressed. So this will be interesting to see what what happens uh, in this case. February 6th is the start date for the trial.